Right, so I'm going to explain how <laughs> Chinese remainder theorem can be used to, to crack uh, RSA. So the the key point of it is that uh, we get the the user to be able to generate three different encryption keys but use the same uh, E value. So with Chinese remainder theory we can actually solve something <coughs> where we take uh, our value and get uh, A same value mod N B same value mod N Uh, equals C. So Chinese remainder theory allows us to be able to solve this equation for the value of X where we have three different N values and we have three different results here. Okay so the form that we have when we're encrypting with RSA is N to the power of E mod N. So that will then equal our cipher. So if we take <laughs> an example and we have m to the power of e and we have uh, an n value of 6 and then that is equal to 5 m to the power of e mod and then the next one that we have is 35 and then that's equal to 20 and m to the power of e mod and we have 125 is equal to our, our sorry 143 is equal to our cipher there. So we can solve this uh, for this value here. So if we do that then the value that we actually get is 125. Okay so <coughs> m, m to the power of e is 125. So all we've done is, is made sure that the user is using three different public keys but uses the same, the same <coughs> e value with the same message. Okay, so the message might be a standard message that's been sent but we use uh, the same e value for, for each one. But the n value is, is changing. So we just have to make sure that we have three different public keys, different n values, and we can crack for with Chinese Minder theorem. So we now have uh, that. So we, we we're trying to solve uh, this to get the value of m. So we take the log of m to the power of e, and that becomes the log of 125. The way logs work, as we're in John Napier's uh, 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 institution here, then that becomes e, e times the log of m is equal to the log of 125. Then the log of m is equal to the log of 125 divided by e. And the inverse of a log is to the power of 10 for using log to, log to base 10. So we have 10 to the power of log 125 divided by E. So in this case E we know because it's the public key. And we'll just say that's 3. So we can find out that the original message was 5. <coughs> so in this way uh, we can actually crack uh, the message uh, without actually knowing the, 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 the root uh, keys and without having to decrypt. So purely from the encryption process we've got three three keys that have been created, could be three different sessions because what normally happens is that E is 10001 in hex which is 65537 so it's often that, that a user will use the same E value but when they're creating new public keys new keys for each session, they'll create a different n value. So in this way we can actually crack RSA. <coughs> if we look at a, a more detailed example here, so there's three n values there. There's the message and the encryption and these are the ciphers. 
we lay them out like this and then we can then use Chinese remainder theorem to calculate this value if we do <coughs> log of that value divided by the encryption key raise it to the power of 10 then we can actually find out the original value which is this one which should be the same as that one okay so in that way we can actually crack RSA without actually knowing any of the root prime numbers okay thank you